right, good morning everyone, or good evening, wherever you are. It's uh, 8 a.m. here in Australia, and yeah, I'm excited. I've got 20 images here open in Photoshop, and I'm gonna go through each one and critique right here in the group. The video is recorded, so it's gonna stay here, so if you can't um, stick with me throughout the entire duration, you'll be able to come back and watch little bits later on. So all of our critiques stay here in the group. If you want to watch any previous critiques from past months, just type critique, live critique into the search bar. But please, I've got someone saying, hey Kelly, I can't see who's making the comments with the program that we're using. I can only read what you've, um, what you've said. And if I'm looking off, off camera, it just means I'm looking at the screen um, behind me so I can read your comments as well. But yeah, I love to make this really interactive. You can ask some questions throughout as well if there's anything that I sort of say, mention. Um, Garrett's here, he's sort of my, uh, my little operator here in the, in the background making sure everything runs smoothly and he also keeps an eye on those comments and questions so he can ask them to me if at some point we need to, to maybe take a break. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason. Um, that was uh, Jenny who says, hey Kelly. Oh, hi and Jenny. And we've got um, Michelle Bird also. Hi Kelly. Good from morning, Utah. Utah. I'm coming to Utah very, very soon. Um, I'm having a workshop there on the, I believe it's the 30th of September. Anyway, my pre-registration, well, it's not pre-registration, but it's a register your interest for my workshops is, um, is currently open. You can find that link. October. It is October, sorry. October, yeah. September, I'm in the in Europe. In the other country. Yes, in the yeah. <laughs> Can't keep up. <laughs> too, many, too many travel dates. Um, so yes, uh, you can register your interest, which will allow you, um, you know, to be first in line to sign up for those workshops on Friday tomorrow, or they open up to the public on Saturday. So, but they do sell out and there's limited spots. But yeah, if you know anyone that might be interested in Utah, let them know. Okay, hi everyone from Poland, 30 minutes before bed. <laughs> I'll try and get through these as quickly as possible and not ramble too much. But basically, if you've not been with me before for a critique, I have all of the images open here in Photoshop. I use um, uh, like my Wacom pen here to, to sort of draw up um, uh, sort of... Oh, what am I looking for? I don't want to say flaws, but I want to draw all over the image just to show you where you can make some changes with your next shoot, possibly. Even I'd... showing like direction of light, like that's one really good visual thing that you you use the the pen for. Yeah, to show it's fantastic. Where the light comes in, where the shadows are, you know, um, especially with composites and that sort of thing, like directions mm -hmm. of light and that sort totally. of stuff. Totally. I talk a lot about composition, I talk about styling and um, and posing and all of those things. So hopefully you get something out of it. If there's something that I say that you don't quite agree with, that's okay. I'm gonna give you my two cents and um, hopefully it helps you sort of, you know, see your image through someone else's eyes and move a little closer to creating the images that you, you really wanna create. But yeah, when you have your images critiqued online, in a, in a group like mine and you've got you know a lot of members and everyone has their their own thoughts and opinions that's okay as long as you know you take all of those little pieces of information on board you do your research as well um, because some people's ideas might not necessarily be you know the right idea for you but where I come from when I give my critique is from a background of judging uh, print competitions and online competitions so I've been trained in what to look for as a judge and when we are judging photos we look for impact we look for technical skill we look for composition we look for storytelling we look for you know um, styling and, and everything that possibly goes in uh, technically to an image so that's where I kind of come from that's my background with critiquing and obviously I offer this once a month to only 20 images because I don't have all day to sit here and do um, an image from every single person in the group and I can't be on Facebook all the time offering critique either because it's a it's a busy place we've got going on here there are literally in our new studio at the back about a hundred people yeah. today filming TV commercials. When I drove in this morning, there was just cars everywhere, so it's kind of crazy. But we've locked ourselves away at the front of the the building, and it's nice and quiet. So I'm going to get started. and I'm going to stop rambling. Okay, I'll bring up the first image. Alrighty. -o. Okay. So everyone can see that one. Yep. Okay. Very good. 
All right, the skin on the baby is, is beautiful and the baby looks comfortable, the baby looks relaxed. But what I'm seeing a lot of is um, these blue blankets. So sometimes less is more and I feel that the, the entire area, you know, the baby is really quite small in comparison to the prop. So possibly using smaller props and if you would perhaps toned um, or selected blankets that weren't so um, opposite in colour tone, I suppose, to the browns that you've got going on in the floor, the bowl and the background, um, it wouldn't be so contrasty and stand out so much because really the baby is really fighting for your attention against all of that blue, even though it's very lovely, but even condensing it as well. Um, I know sometimes when I'm sort of styling and things like that, you know, we don't have a million props, we don't have a million different colours and things like that. I'll often in Photoshop, you know, just reduce the size of it as well. And there are a few ways you can do that. Um, I don't recommend doing this all the time. I always, you know, recommend you getting it right in camera. But say, for example, you wanted to reduce the size of um, the blue in this image, then, you know, you could possibly come in with your lasso tool, give that a little bit of a feather, create a copy layer, and you could potentially um, you know, bring that in to reduce the size of it. Now I've done that really rough just to give you an idea because that baby is being really overpowered by that blue. I think you've handled the background really well. I think, um, you know, there's beautiful detail there. The direction of light is falling across the baby. Um, really nice. Possibly um, a little, a little con like a little bright in terms of um, where the light is hitting the blanket, so just being careful not to, to have too many um, brighter areas other than the baby. But yeah, I think the posing and, and the lighting is really quite lovely and the baby looks really comfortable. There's not really much else that I can add to that. It just for, you know, when you are styling and putting things together, just to kind of, you know, have a look at, is it, is it overpowering the baby? Is the baby competing for attention there? Alrighty, let's move on to our next image. Before we move on, one quick question about baby and kids um, in Poland. Uh -huh. Will you be critiquing over there? What's what's happening there? Um, no, I'm not critiquing images. What I'm doing is I'm giving a seminar, a talk, and that'll be. Oh gosh, I can't remember the date, but anyway, it's on the <laughs> it's on their website. <laughs> And then I'm teaching two workshops, so that's posing and editing, but they're both sold out, I believe. Okay. But um, my, my seminar will, will cover a lot of business and it'll cover a lot of um, conversation <coughs> around sort of, you know, perfecting your skills as a, um, as a photographer and what to look for. Thank so, you. yeah. Alrighty. Okay, so the styling here in terms of, you know, coordinating all of these colours together, you've done really well because it's not easy finding a whole heap of, you know, different sort of textures and things that work well together as a colour palette. And we've got our, um, our, our rice paper wrap going on here, which is really lovely. I like how you can see the little arms and feet through the, through the wrap. When it comes to doing this particular wrap, though, you need something that's really quite stretchy so you can make it firmer so it doesn't look so loose just around the bottom there so this probably does have a little bit of stretch in it but you really want to have something that you can pull quite um, you know quite sort of tight around the baby to keep it really neat and compact but other than than that with the wrapping that's about it with the flooring I can see that it's been changed in color um, so when you are um, painting over a background, um, maybe add a little bit more texture in there so it doesn't look, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here, so flat and, um, and, and sort of, yeah, and you've just got to be careful when you're coming around the edge of, of the prop and stuff like that. Whenever I do any um, sort of colour changing and stuff like that, I always zoom in really tight with my... Um, you know my brush and I change the hardness of that brush and I I come in really quite close to those edges just to make sure that I haven't missed any pieces and yeah just one other thing that I want to comment on here in terms of um, 
the perspective is that it's just slightly off. So it looks like it's just tilting down a little bit. So that just means that when you've shot this from above, you're not quite square on to that bowl. So just making sure that you get that angle quite um, quite high above the baby there to, to get that perspective right. You can make an adjustment in Photoshop. I'll just quickly show you. Command J, Command T to transform. If you hold the Command key in, you can slightly adjust the perspective here. There are other ways to do this. This is just a really quick way and that basically just tilts that baby back um, to where you sort of can correct that perspective. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, lighting looks lovely. Just be careful of a few little sort of hot spots around the nose and things like that. You can use the patch tool to sort of soften those. You can, um, you know, select those brighter areas. And then if you go up to edit, you can edit fade, fade patch selection and bring that down just to reduce those highlights um, so they're not so bright. And just be careful when you are focusing with your image there. You can see that it's a little soft in focus. So we always want to make sure that we're, we're using a single point um, focal point and focusing on that eye. So I always toggle my focal points. I never focus recompose because that means I'm going to move off my focal plane, especially if you're shooting wide open. So I get my, my camera angle, I move that focal point, and then I have a look at my meter. And that's how I get that exposure in terms of um, that, that capture. So just be careful of that, because I can see if we have a little look down here, you know, we're a little sharper down at the bottom end of the image there as well. Especially when, you, when you're sort of taking quite a wide pullback shot and, you know, you're trying to focus on a very small area of that image, you know, you've got to make sure that you get that focal point right on that eye to, to nail that focus. So yeah, good job. And um, just be careful when you are with handling those backgrounds that they don't sort of become sort of a bit flat and muddy there. Maybe adding in a little bit of noise to the background can just um, give it some texture and some, some grit, which is what I love. <laughs> Not everyone's a cup of tea, but you know. It is one of your favorite techniques. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gabriella from Switzerland says hi. Hello. Um, Lizzie has switched off Netflix and is filling up her glass of wine, obviously. Cheers. <laughs> it's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Okay, so we don't often see a lot of really bright, high key images. Um, and I love um, beautiful white images and you've handled the whites in this really, really well. The background is beautiful and smooth. It's got lots of detail. Uh, let me just bring up actually my histogram. Here we go. So what I'm always looking for in, in camera is the histogram on the back. So to make sure that I've kept all, you know, all the detail in those highlights and you've done a really great job of doing that. So the lighting coming across the baby is beautiful. You are going to get, you know, some highlights um, in, in white where they are a little bit brighter, but that's all right because white is brighter than skin. So that can be expected. You can tone them down, but I think you've done a really good job handling here. The only thing that I'm kind of seeing here is this sort of area here is kind of big and flat. Uh, there's not a lot going on there. There's no real shape to the arms and even while the baby's face is really quite lovely, um, you know, there's, there's, this, there's an area there that's, um, that's kind of nothing. It's not really showing the shape of the arms, so it makes the baby look like it doesn't necessarily have any arms. So you might want to just kind of go back and have a look at that because when you are working with, um, you know, fabric in terms of how light hits it, so where the fabric is folded and um, and so on, where the light hits that, it, it's obviously like peaks and valleys. So you're gonna have to work with your highlights and shadows to adjust and shape that fabric. Um, it's quite tricky to do if you haven't, you know, done it before, but uh, you know, you can, you can sort of adjust it and, and then you can use those highlights and shadows to actually sort of emphasize more the shape that's underneath that blanket if that makes sense uh, yeah but other than that you've done a really great job so I know some babies don't like having their arms out or they, they settle more but um, the only other thing 
the, the everything else is white and then we have like this cream ivory colored headband so I probably would have gone with a white headband there um, just to be con consistent with the styling and the texture in the background doesn't necessarily match the texture in that headband so you know maybe take a shot with it on and then take it off and take a shot and see which one you prefer because sometimes baby just babies don't need things like that they just um, you know they're just pure and, and perfect all on their own so something else to consider great job there oh goodness that face all right I'll zoom out a little bit I always zoom out because it gives me an opportunity to have a look at the you know what sort of catches my eye straight away when we, we talk about you know impact um, and your first response and the first thing that I see are these really big um, white headboards that they're so overpowering if I zoom out you can see they're the first things that you kind of look at and then you start to see this darker area in here and then you've got to look in to go what is it that I'm looking at here um, let me bring out my history palette as well all right so the face here is absolutely priceless in terms of that expression. I think you've done a great job of capturing that. It looks like, you know, baby's flipping, flipping you off. Um, <laughs> um, I think that's really, really cute. I think you've done a great job with wrapping the baby. It's the lighting here that's really kind of um, affecting this particular image. So I'd probably go with um, a, a softer um, light source that's not so intense. Um, because you've got a lot of contrast going on here there there is quite a lot going on in the image what I probably would do also is think about bringing in a reflector to try and bounce as much light as you possibly can back into you know these shadows so they're not so heavy and dark and competing with these brighter highlights over here um, that you know you know you've got texture and, and color and detail you've got blues and pinks and purples and lemons coming on in the flooring and then you've got you know flat white and green flowers going on over here and then you've got more purple down here and then you've got cream white pink and then we've got this headband sort of sitting in the middle of the baby's forehead that's so much going on in this image you need to kind of tone it down just a little bit in terms of what you're adding to it because the baby is getting lost in here that beautiful face is competing with everything else that's going on around the image so sometimes you know you take the shot and then you look at it and you go oh not not so sure that the flowers are really adding to this composition so you might not take those flowers away and take another shot just because it doesn't work doesn't mean you failed in creating an image just have a look at it and go you know what mm, I'm not so sure about that and then remove and then do it that way um, and with headbands push them back into the hairline up here not down on the forehead because if you have a look at the amount of head we've got here and the amount of head we've got here that headband is now sort of cutting through the middle of that head so you want to push that headband back up into the uh, the hairline so you can see more of that beautiful face if that makes sense um, but yeah like I said you've done a really great job with wrapping just the intensity of that light is really really bright and um, and you need to bring in some more light from the other side with a reflector to kind of bounce it on so yeah all right okay so I think the first thing I've noticed here is um, how dark the top of the baby's head is in comparison to the baby's body so if you have a look um, and I'll bring up my my curves palette and I'll just kind of show you here so I'm just going to click over in here so you can see where my little eyedropper is moving there um, in terms of the information in that histogram and if we come down here you know it is much brighter um, compared to the rest of the, um, the the body there so this all comes down to the direction of your light um, because the lights coming in and it's hitting the baby here as opposed to hitting the baby's face so you just need to turn the baby sort of around a little more so that face is going to get you know an even spread of light um, across the baby you can you know brighten that up in Photoshop um, quite easily 
and you can darken this down but you do want to get that direction of light right in in camera um, also with your with that slope it looks like you know the baby's kind of on a bit of a downward downward slope there and you can kind of see it breaking off I mean sorry come it falling off down into the background there as well so just rotating that camera so it's a little more straight on giving that baby a little bit more stability throughout the composition as well and when I talk about composition you know I'm looking at uh, your rule of thirds so I always want to keep the baby in those bottom two thirds of my frame and have that that background um, up there but if the background is not adding to the composition you know in camera come in a little closer and fill the frame a bit more with that baby so there's not so much going on around around them um, in post-production you know you can you can use your highlights and shadows you can lighten some of these shadows here over here you can darken down areas and that'll even out and flatten that background for you um, I teach all of this in my editing tutorials on newborn posing and it is really quite simple to do but unless you've been shown you don't really know so yeah you can um, you can sort of then start to to really polish those images once you've got that capture right in camera but yeah I'd have a look at the the composition there in terms of rotating your camera and coming in a little closer and then directing the baby's head around a little more so that light falls onto the face. Um, with posing, like I said, uh, I think you know, you've know you done a great job here with posing and sometimes it can be a little hard to get these feet right. But with the bum up pose, what I try to do is move my body around a little more to the face so that I'm not seeing um, you know, the, the, the butt crack. Um, there's no other simple way to put it, <laughs> a polite way to put it, but um, you, you don't really want to be looking at that. So just move your body around so that the face um, is closer to your camera because here what we're seeing is a, um, a large area of skin that is bright and we want to see more of the face. So it's just a slight shift around to the towards the top of the baby's head there. And with tucking those little feet up, once you can get up underneath those shins and you can position those knees properly, you should be able to, to fold that foot on top of the other one, which will lift that bottom up a bit higher for you. But with the bum up pose, um, it's one of those poses. You know, you, you've got babies that like to lie um, differently. You've got some babies that like will have a rounded back like this little one and then you've got other babies that will often have like a curve in their spine and they prefer to sort of arch their back um, and they're going to go into the bum up pose a lot more easily so it just depends on the baby and whether you know how they like to be positioned because some are like tight little balls that prefer to bring their legs up and have a more rounded spine so some when I'm posing babies especially um, you know in this particular pose it's funny to go back and get you know, uh, a series of images all in the same pose and just have a look at how different each baby is is positioned in that. Um, if you've got my bum up pose, there's a PDF in there and at the back of it, I think there's like six babies in the bum up pose and you can literally see um, the difference of how they all prefer to lie. And it's just a matter of reading the baby um, throughout that pose and seeing how they react to being in that position if it's not something that, that's um, that comfortable for them. So yeah. The only other thing that I would add just very quickly is once you've got that foot up there, just another little support in here underneath that area will just help sort of lift it up a little bit to keep that foot in position. Alrighty. Okay. Right, I think you've done a great job here using, you know, these archways um, in terms of your composition to to frame within the frame. I'm, you know, often a big fan of that. And then you've got, you know, another one going on down here, and it's really sort of adding to to bringing the eye in towards your subject. Um, up here, it is quite dark, and then it's quite bright in here. What I and then you've got some bright lines down here. What I would do is potentially darken those down even more. And then what you could do is change the color of these, and they'll still be there, but they'll be less um, less uh, dominant. Yeah. <laughs> 
Garrett's good when uh, I haven't got the right words. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in terms of changing the colour, um, you know, you can. There's many, many ways to do it in Photoshop, but just very quickly, I'll just show you what, um, you know, what you can do. You can make them, and then they'll they'll still be there. They'll just blend into the background a little better if you change that colour. So you can also de in increase the density as well. And that's a little bright, a little dark. Let's bring the opacity back. So when you do that, they're still there, but just to show you, now you're sort of creating a composition that is more complementary to your subjects because when you have a look, oops, when you have a look at um, you know everything that's kind of going on over here in the image, oh hang on, I've got to change my brush back to normal. It is very early in the morning, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not perfect. Um, you know, you've got yellows, you've got bright greens, you've got dark greens, you've got this silver blue, and then you've got this magenta that's really quite intense in the middle. Um, and you know what, that should be the hero, but I just tone everything else that's going on down in the background to complement the scene and make them stand out a lot because... Um, yeah, it is quite a busy background, but I do like how you've seen a location and you're making it work for you. You've also got, um, uh, you know, this really bright pathway as well going on here. So perhaps choosing a different time of day when the light is less intense and, um, and using a longer focal length with a, um, you know, say a, a 70 to 200, move further back away from your subject. And you know what, um, open that aperture right up, shoot that at 2.8, and then you're going to create that separation with depth of field um, to, to really make them pop and stand out. So yeah, a few, other, a few little things there to kind of consider. Um, her eyes here are looking off into the distance and just a little bit higher and possibly a little bit more of a glance towards him would have, um, would have you know, created a bit more of an intimate moment between the two of them. He looks somewhat strained and his arms are dead straight. He looks like he's being forced to hold her um, there and he doesn't look comfortable. So it's a matter of communicating with the with the couple and, and asking them, you know, I often when I've got a couple together, I say, you know, if you're at home right now and you were standing in your kitchen and you walked up behind your wife, how would you hold her? And I get usually a little bit of a giggle, but I get something genuine. Then I have a look at the way that they're standing and I go, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Okay, what I want you to do now is just turn a little more this way for me and just take a deep breath in and relax. I want you to look at each other. And you've got to communicate, you've got to talk to them so that you get that really beautiful intimate capture because this is kind of a little stiff and and sort of set up. So I think you're, you're onto something and what you're seeing um, it has so much potential and I know that you're um, you're going to take it even further so thanks for submitting um, and I, I look forward to, to seeing what you come up with next time alrighty oh my goodness it's a bunny it's a very cute outfit uh, Susan's off to bed she says thank you very much for today's critique um, it's been so helpful. Um, we've got uh, Denise is new to the group and is attending from Auckland. So big hi, shout out hi. to Denise. Um, but yeah, we've got um, lots of people joining us this morning. So Fantastic. Over 100 people um, joining us live, which is amazing. So. Oh, somebody has said mum wanted bum crack. Okay. That's busy. Okay, sorry. Oh, yes, that was the, um, the... Bum up? The bum up with the little bit of bum crack. Okay. So. Personal preference, obviously. Yep. Um, alrighty. Let's get back to this one. This is probably the cutest outfit I have ever seen. And with Easter, that's just been, um, you know, this is a great little Easter, Easter shot. And I can see the other little bunny in here. Alrighty, let's go in and have a little bit of a look around. Okay. Posing, the baby looks really comfortable. Direction of light coming across the baby looks great. Um, the, the 
the outfit is a little bright, but that's okay. Um, it's there's still lots of detail there in you know in those um, highlights. So you just need to be a little bit more careful with with those. We've got a visitor. He's just come in. Ali's come in for a quick hello. And um, that's about it there. I think the posing's great and I think the lighting is lovely. In terms of composition, you know, there's so much space around the baby, you could have potentially come in a lot closer here. So if we have a little look here, I'll probably reduce the amount of space that you've got around the baby and just bring that baby's head up a little higher and sort of come in closer and done that in camera, not so much in post, because obviously when you're cropping images in post-production, you are going to remove a lot of information from that file. And just where you've, you've got that light hitting the floor there, I would have possibly, I'm not sure if this, I don't know what type of light that, that you've used, but if that was a big softbox, what I do is it looks like that softbox is coming down, you know, towards that floor. I would have kind of tilted that softbox up a little bit so that the light coming off the edge of the softbox um, feathers more across the baby and not so much the floor. If it was natural light, what I would potentially do, uh, let's get rid of this crop tool, um, I would block the bottom of the window to stop that light coming through and hitting the floor and having it skim and in, if, you've, if you've got a wall at the base of the window then the light's going to come across that and skim across the top of the baby like you would feather with a softbox. So um, that way you don't have this high sort of bright area over here on the floor because over here we're so dark and over here and it's just that one area which makes me kind of think that it's a soft box is pointing sort of down in this direction what you want to do is have it kind of come across the baby and it's still going to be lighting from above it's just you're tilting that light off and then you're just getting that feathered spill light that's going to fall across the baby there um, I would also bring in a, um, a reflector over here because as you can see over here with your information in the histogram, um, we're really close to, to having little to no, little, no detail in those dark shadowy areas over there. So it's really quite dark sort of falling off and you can see it here um, in those areas. What's going to happen there is those blacks are really going to block up and you're going to have some banding and things because when you've got no information there, as that tone um, of graduated, sorry, tone changes to where it comes in, you're going to get that banding um, in your image. So yeah, just be careful of that. But that's about it. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. Okay, so first up, let's have a look at our histogram. We've got a lot of information here hitting the edge of that histogram and I can see there's some bright details here. We've got white going on around the outside of the bowl. We've got a white headband. I'll just make my brush a bit bigger so you can see it. We've got a white headband um, and then we've also got some highlights in the blanket here that we're going to have lost some detail in. So you've got to be really careful with that exposure. Um, this is where you, when you are shooting, you can't rely on the LCD, the thumbnail and the LCD, to give you a clear indication of whether or not you've got that capture right. You've got to use that histogram because it's showing you what information you're capturing in that frame from your highlights through to your midtones through to your shadows. So these are your highlights here, if you can see that on my screen. These are your midtones and these are your shadows. So there's not a lot of midtone. So there's a lot of contrast going on here. And we've got these bright areas as well as a very dark background. So <clears throat> when it comes to styling and choosing what you're going to use to put the baby in, you know, um, <coughs> excuse me, just one moment. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, it's 12 a.m. currently in South Africa. Oh, wow. Uh, where Lena's joining us from, so she loves watching. Thank you very much, Kelly Brown. Hi. Thank you guys for joining us. How many have we got watching? Uh, we're up to 117. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. 118. More people. <laughs> <laughs> the, the more, the merrier. Yeah. If you can sit and tolerate my rambling, stick around. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Um, yeah, so be a little bit more careful when you are choosing uh, what it is that you're going to, to style these setups with because there's so much going on again, like I've mentioned with some other images um, around the baby, that the baby gets lost. Um, obviously, the baby's there, we can see it, but we're looking at that wrap. We're looking at the fabric that's around the baby's um, body, not that baby's face. So, um, you know, these, these, these are beautiful. And you know what? Possibly mix it up a little bit. If you've got a pink wrap, the same color as this, you know what? You could have laid that fabric out underneath the, the baby instead of using the wood floor and used it that way. So sometimes you can sort of change things up a little bit and, um, and have a little bit of fun. I'm just gonna zoom in here because I can see that the background is really quite sharp. There's a lot of detail going on and there's also, you know, like a lot of little things going on down here. Give it a little bit of a sweep, come around, use your healing brush and get rid of all of that, um, that mess and that dust. But when we come in here, we can see that we've got <clears throat> um, something going on as well here. But the baby's not sharp, the baby's not in focus. And this is where we've got to make sure that we're moving that focal point to the area of the image. Once we've, we've come up above the baby, we get set, we find that perspective, that camera angle, and, and then we move that focal point to get that focus sharp where we want it to be sharp, which is the baby's face. So you do need to be really careful with that in terms of um, <clears throat> detail. <coughs> So yeah, a few things to consider. With that composition, we've got that baby, you know, right down in the, the bottom of that image. So there's a lot of space going on around here that just does not add to the composition. So, you know, you wanna make sure if you're, if you're photographing a circular object that that baby's in the center of that frame. Um, and you know what, you, you're kinda of gonna have to play with it. Also, when you're positioning a baby inside a circular prop like this, um, trying to get them in the middle can be really tricky so what I like to do is you know create that well in the center and position the middle of their back um, in that well not their bottom and that way you're going to have that head come down and you'll you'll be more accurate in terms of getting them in the middle there alrighty next image oh. All right, beautiful skin tones here in the in the back. So I'm just having a little look here at the direction of that light. It seems to be uh, quite bright in the background, and the lighting on the baby just seems a little flat. So, and the the foreground is darker than the the background, which for me means that the placement of the light wasn't quite right. So we want to get that light coming in over here and falling off the baby. Um, in terms of the direction and the intensity of that light because you want that baby to pop um, and you need to be able to, to adjust your light to be able to do that in terms of um, you know really highlighting that baby because the, the foreground here is, is, um, is quite dark and the, the background is really quite bright. If I bring up my curves palette here what I'm going to do is just hold the Alt key in and I'm going to move this bottom slider and I'm going to show you where we're going to start to lose information. So in the background there, um, you can see that it's so much brighter than the foreground and that's where we're losing a lot of information. So you want to be careful with, the, um, with that direction of light. Posing, I think you've done a great job. That little foot just kind of dangling out a little bit more there and that's because that baby's probably pulled that knee further underneath them as they do. So it's just a matter of getting that shot and then coming back, popping your hand up underneath that shin and just giving that foot a little bit of a, a tug forward and bringing that knee out again. Um, camera angle, I don't mind this kind of higher perspective but when I look at um, you know composition, the the baby it looks like it's on sort of like a bit of a downward fall this way so maybe just kind of rotating your frame and putting that baby's head upright and what I'm often looking for in terms of balance in composition is just an equal distance from the top of the baby's head to the edge of both the, the top and tail of the of the baby and that baseline there so a slight rotation there and if you want come down and get another another angle from a lower perspective and then go back um, you know, in, in 
on your computer and have a look at them side by side and just see which camera angle you're you know you love because that's what I love about camera angles yes there's do's and don'ts in terms of you know where you should be shooting from but you know finding your own style is also really important as well and coming up with some some different perspectives um, in, with those skin tones you know and I said they were really beautiful here in the back they um, they do sort of fall off to be a little pinker over here in the, the tail end so um, you know consistency in terms of the the tonality and the skin just be careful of that as well Alrighty. Great job with the smoothness of your blanket though. Oh dear lord. That's a bit cute. Look at that face. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> oh. I'll buy one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett doesn't even like babies. Um, great job with the posing and that that camera angle is you know that baby smack bang in the middle of your frame and I think you've got a great um, great camera angle and beautiful posing. The what's kind of grabbing my eye and pulling me away is um, is all of this over here. It's really quite bright in terms of the direction of your light. When that pulls me away, I'm then drawn by this sort of solid heavy line over here. So what that does is it makes your eye dance around the frame. Um, so just be careful with that brightness. Obviously, it's the closest thing to the light source and it's white, so it is going to be bright. So just a little bit more control in terms of um, the intensity of that light and how you handle it in post-production. Like I said, if you are using a large softbox, try just feathering that light, you know, grab, a, grab an apple or a loaf of bread, pop it in your prop and have a look at how you can adjust that softbox in terms of using the edge of the softbox to direct the light across the baby. If this is natural light, again, um, put something, can I use this, Garrett? Put that along the bottom of the the window so if you've got a window that's you know from the floor to ceiling that's the words I'm looking for um, block it at the floor so that it's not coming in and um, and hitting that floor and it's just going to come across the baby then at that right height so I use sheets of polystyrene for that and it works beautifully but um, yeah that's the only thing that I would um, possibly you know suggest here the only other thing you could do to kind of soften these hard lines down here is um, it's a quick little trick I just use the patch tool and line it up and then I go to edit fade patch selection and I just soften that line a little bit so that it's not so heavy and and contrasty um, and yeah yeah then you could tone that down to match the the side there quick little trick all right god that baby's face is cute oh one other thing when I noticed I zoomed in just be careful not to over sharpen the the skin um, you can see you know a little bit of pixelation coming coming through there where it's over sharpened it might just be because it's a, a lower res file but yeah maybe just when you are sharpening zoom in and with the hair it doesn't really need to be sharp um, so when I sharpen my images you know I, I apply a mask and then I invert that and I only paint that layer on to where I want the image to be nice and sharp so a bit of a viewer update uh, we've got Jazz from Philadelphia we've Hi. got Nicola from Scotland oh fantastic um, apparently rambling when you've got an Australian accent doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> well I'm not going to put my bogan Australian accent on I'll leave that for when we've had a few drinks <laughs> um, Nageku I apologise if I said that wrong uh, from Japan hi um, welcome we have so many people in our group from all over the world and that's what I love you know with the internet our industry is it's it's really coming together as a community but it's such a small world the photography world now because we're all online and um, and I love that we can connect and share you know with people all over the place it's pretty cool I'm just reading some of those comments. Let's keep going. <laughs> Alrighty, check out that baby. He looks super chill. Reminds me of how my son sleeps. Do you know what? I really, the, the muted color tones in this are really, really lovely. And I think you've handled it really well. Um, maybe just a little bit more color 
in around the baby's face. It just looks a little flat. When we remove all of those reds, um, you know, it, it can make that baby look quite flat. So what I'd probably suggest here is just sort of, you know, let's just, for a quick example, show you. Um, just the difference, adding just a little bit of tone back into the baby can do. And babies are supposed to be pink. So yeah, it just makes that baby stand out a little bit more. So when it's when you remove all of that color and that tone, um, just mask back some of it in areas where you know the baby should be pink. For example, the lips and things like that. So you can play a little bit more with that contrast. Um, you know, you paint it on and then you change the 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 the, um, the opacity of that layer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you'll be fine but also you can use your curves as well to kind of add a little bit more depth and push those blacks back into where they should be black another thing that I'm looking at here is the direction of that light so um, let me just get rid of that and come back in here so what we've got going on here is the light coming straight up the baby's face and we're lighting from the wrong angle that's the only sort of big major boo-boo here um, the light should be coming down across the baby from that position and you know what you're going to then create um, you know beautiful highlights and shadows that are going to bring those features of the baby out when you light from this direction this is you know what we call ghouls lighting you highlight the nose you create dark shadows under the eye and it is very unflattering to the baby so just be careful with the direction and the intensity of that light um, you know we've got some bright highlights going on here and down in here so just be careful of those as well but in terms of composition I love it in terms of the way you've handled the floor beautiful and the posing of that baby like it's a really beautiful simple setup and this is what I've been saying if you watched my live the other day when I went through all my um, continuous lights you know, you can, you might be able to, to pose a baby beautifully and create a beautifully styled setup, but if you can't get that light right, that's going to make or break that image for you. So, um, just have a have another little look at that. But good job. Alrighty. Oh, we've got lots of bright images today, don't we? Uh -huh. I like the the way that you've used a, a white background with a white dress. You know, Mum is really standing out here. A few little things um, in terms of the the lighting that's really kind of hit me straight off the bat is, you know, this is about Mum's belly. This is about her being pregnant. So I would have turned her towards that light, um, and then posed her that way and had her look back towards the camera from that same position um, and then controlled the intensity of that light a little more. I also would have um, some form of reflector over here to fill those shadows so that they're not so dark um, and then that's going to give you that beautiful high key look that you're looking for. You also want to be careful when you are shooting from a slightly higher perspective because I can see that you're, you're up a little higher than mum and shooting down that you can make um, their legs look shorter than what they obviously are. You want to lengthen a woman, um, especially when she's standing and pregnant. And obviously, you know, m most women tend to put on a few few kilos when they're when they are pregnant. So you want to elongate them, um, which means you know, often shooting them sort of a bit more um, square on. The only reason I shoot from above when I'm, I'm shooting adults is they're often holding their baby and I want to shoot from there um, to eliminate everything um, below the, the elbows and and reduce the size of that so that the babies the, and the, their faces are the, the main key part of that image. But um, definitely here, you know, I think, you know, she, she looks comfortable, she looks relaxed, but I, I think that it's the higher, the higher angle here is not so flattering for her. Um, so yeah, turning her towards the light, adding in a, a big sort of reflector. I use large sheets of polystyrene, 
and we found them at a warehouse. So I just Googled polystyrene factory, Brisbane, where I live. So you'll be able to find those um, elsewhere. Also throwing in some light um, down here will help reduce a lot of the sort of um, darker lines that are that are drawing you away from the uh, the dress but using highlights and shadows you can control those um, at the bottom of the dress as well um, what I would also do is come in with the liquify tool let's go into liquify okay so I don't want you to change her but what I would do is just sort of tuck in a few of the little bumps so that they're not so bumpy um, around her and even coming in here a great way to sort of tidy up the uh, the dress and this one here tucking that in and then what that does is it just makes everything look a lot sort of neater cleaner and um, and more simple our oh, Photoshop's got a conniption there but yeah, with that um, expression as well, just be careful that they don't look like, you know, they've, there's not much going on, like there's nobody home. So what I often do is I, I get them to, to, in the pose, and then I get them to breathe in. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to now breathe out, relax your shoulders, and just a little bit of a smile and looking up right now, beautiful, and talking them through that process. Um, and they're going to relax, they're going to feel more comfortable and that way she's going to share more emotion as well. So yeah, good job, but just consider the different um, direction in light and also, you know, over here where you've got some sort of grey shadows going on as well. Um, just pulling that light back a little bit and that light's going to spread even further. Alrighty. <laughs> Look at all that hair, my goodness. All right. Okay, first thing I can see is this baby is cropped really tight and on an angle that's kind of a bit awkward because it makes you want to turn your head around to the, to the side there. You know, our brains are trained to read from left to right, so I would have possibly um, changed my camera angle so that her head was over here and her body was here and then allowed a little bit more space around her, so moved back. Um, this is why I shoot with a 24 to 70 lens because whenever I'm shooting a prop from above, I can zoom out. And when the baby's in the center of my, my frame and I'm using a wider angle, I'm going to have less distortion than I would say, for example, um, shooting on my posing bag and having to come in and fill the frame with the baby, um, you know, its head towards the edge of the frame. So. What was I going to say after that? I was then going to come in and talk a little bit about... Um, God, I lost my train of thought then because I looked down. Um, I'm also looking here at at the lines in the, the fabric. So we've got really quite sort of straight lines. And then we've got the, the teddy bear kind of coming out the middle there. So maybe not necessary to have the teddy bear in there. It just looks really busy and, and messy going on there. Um, I would have potentially kind of put the teddy bear over here beside the baby um, and then that way make it all about the baby and, and have that off to the side because it would have blended a little better with that background being you know close to the same color and, and obviously the amount of texture that's in it. Um, I do love photographing awake babies again with headband pop it up into the hairline so it's not so busy on that little one's face and <laughs> I'm just looking at that that light so sometimes these highlights can be really quite sort of bright in um, in the baby's eyes and, and distracting there but that light is coming you know straight down onto the baby um, so you can see that the brightest part of the image is right here so just rotating that baby turning that baby um, you know around this way away from that light and then you're going to get that light and it's going to come across the baby this way so it's going to be a little bit more flattering um, and softer and then it won't be sort of so dark and, and grey down here when I do come in I'm just having a look at some of these sort of grey tones um, in around this area just be careful of those as well but yeah pull back a little bit 
rotate that baby um, so it looks a little uh, more balanced within the frame and just give it a bit more room to, to breathe. But I do love your um, styling and colours. Yes, beautiful. Um, we do have Natasha's asking about the latest um, version of uh, Photoshop. This particular version of Photoshop is on my laptop. <laughs> this is Garrett's um, laptop. <laughs> Kelly sticks with the old versions. Um, like yourself, who hasn't updated for months, mm -hmm. Kelly actually hasn't updated for mm -hmm. years. Oh, um, that's terrible. Just because of those sorts of things that you're talking about. The, currently, the Liquify tool um, was having a few issues, and myself and Michelle did have those same problems. Um, but Mojave 10 point something um, did actually fix that problem. So um, it'll probably be an update with um, like one of the one of the most recent updates that should be able to fix it for you. But if you um, want to try it out, you can actually keep your old installation of Photoshop in there as well. So you can have two installations on your computer for different versions. Find out if it works. If it doesn't, get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know they often say to me, update, update. And I'm like, no, oh, I'm not having any problems over here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do see all the frustrations that people have with some of those updates and I'm, I'm comfortable because, you know, having a sporting background, my mother used to always say to me, you never change a winning team. And people, you know, say to me, why are you still using that old backdrop stand in my studio? And I'm like, it works, it works for me. So this is where I always encourage photographers, if something works for you, stick with it. You know, if you're happy doing things your way and it works, go for it. Um, you know, you can take obviously other people's advice on board, but it's, you know, you do you and I'll do me. It's your favourite saying. I think that's the saying of the year. Yep. Yep. Okay. I reckon stick to it. Another, another high key image. I'm looking at that histogram. We've got details in the highlights. Great job. Baby looks really comfortable, really relaxed. Only thing here, um, you know, that's really kind of standing out for me is just that perspective. That baby's bottom half is... You know, if we have a look at the side, oops, a bit wonky there with my pen. If we have a look here at the bottom half of the baby, you know, it's a lot larger than the top half, or well, equal to. But we're seeing a lot of wrap here, and it's um, it's quite sort of big and bulky. So you want to get over just that little bit higher, um, or not prop up the baby's bottom so much, and possibly put some more supports in behind the the top half of the baby, and that's going to lift them up closer, so you don't have to get all the way over. I know I've been in workshops where people have kind of said, you know, well, I'm challenged with my height. I can't. I'm not as tall as you. I can't get over and get that perspective right. So it's just a matter of how you angle that baby and position them with the supports to lift that baby's um, head up a little bit. And you know what, um, even you know, in, in post-production, you can reduce that. You can, for example, um, like I did previously, sort of tuck in the bottom half of that image a little bit. And you know, you can, uh, where's my lasso tool? Come around the bottom half here. And this is just a really, you'd feather that obviously, come in and you'd just warp that in around the base of the baby so it wasn't so um, large and distracting there. Um, another thing I would kind of do is sort of soften the, the wrap here. There's a lot of sort of highlights and shadows going on. Um, you know, you can reduce some of those those height, those shadows to sort of help blend that um, wrap into the background. So even just, you know, quick sort of 30% over, you can, obviously you'd maybe pick a color down here where it's a bit similar, but you can paint over that and um, soften that down a little bit so it's not so distracting around the baby. But yeah, I'm enjoying the skin tones um, uh, on the baby. The, the little foot down here is just a little, um, little off. It's uh, looking a little sort of purple there, so maybe just match that up a bit. You know, I can see where the direction of um, of light is coming across the baby there, which is nice and soft. Just be careful of some of those highlights there. So when I talk about, you know, adjusting your highlights and shadows, um, even just coming in on your blanket there and where you've got some shadows, just use, um, you know, a lighten tool. Um, what I, I often use curves. So for example, I would create a curves 
and I come in with those mid-tones, lighten it, oh, we've got a layer going on up here, and, and then add a mask, invert that, and then with my brush, I just kind of come in and touch up some of the shadows, and, um, and then blend them with my brush, or add a little bit of blur to that mask, um, and that's going to really help you smooth out your blanket without having to paint over it and then you're going to lose texture and detail and create banding and all sorts of problems. So the lumps and bumps in your posing bag and your blankets, where the light hits them, it's going to create shadows and highlights. You just need to, to, to work with those and adjust them and you're going to get beautiful, smooth back, backdrops, backgrounds, backdrops. <laughs> um, Hanik has a question about white images, actually. Yep. Um, question, Kelly. What would you do to make sure your whites are really white? Sometimes with custom white balance and grey card, it's still slightly off. Do you know, your camera's always going to make it grey. It is. So that's probably something, um, because it thinks everything's grey. Uh, it doesn't see in colour like you and I. It thinks in black and white and how many shades of grey there are between black and grey, black and white, sorry. So it's going to think that your mid-tones are, you know, 50% grey and that's just what it does um you you know you can i see i prefer to shoot warm and have a beautiful warmth in my image getting those whites pure white you know you're often going to have to kind of play around with those a little bit in photoshop to get them white white but that's where having a calibrated monitor comes in and making sure what you see on your screen is exactly what it is um but what was i going to say before in terms of your camera um, and how it's capturing white. Obviously, every camera and maker model is going to be slightly different, and what you know, what it can see in terms of shades of grey from black to white is going to change slightly as well. So that's probably a little bit more technical and advanced in terms of explaining it that way. But how you light the image, how you capture it, obviously getting that um, white balance perfect in camera if you're looking for white white images um, is going to be yeah the trick to getting that capture right but sometimes your camera it thinks that white is gray and it's going to capture it like that so it can be slightly off sure. without going into a full lesson because <laughs> <laughs> we've we we've, we've an hour in now and i've got to keep moving okay wow look at this so there's lots of styling going on here i'm really enjoying the yellow and the gray and then we've got this sort of warmer warmer gray background over here the the addition of the flowers is really quite lovely I, I think you've done great there the only thing that I don't think that this image needs is the yellow on the floor down here I don't I think that there's so much now going on around the baby that I kind of keep my eye keeps going to these two areas here and I don't think that they're they're so necessary um, they're pulling my eye away from you know the beautiful styling that you've got going on up here um, bringing that baby down lower in the prop so its head doesn't look like it's touching the edge there probably um, would make you a little more comfortable looking at this I always feel personally this is me personally feel somewhat uncomfortable when I say see babies come into contact with hard surfaces so you want to create a beautiful soft environment around them make them look comfortable make them look um, you know um, and balanced also within the frame because you've got you've got a frame within a frame and I think you've done that really well with a square crop but the baby's not in the middle of that so just bringing that baby down and centering them um, will help there. Um, with some of the darker lines on the backdrop some are darker than others so like using that patch tool you can soften those to match the rest using that patch tool fade patch selection um, will make a huge difference and just create less distraction going on around the baby. So they're there, they're just softer. Um, I love the wrapping. I think you've done a really great job. Baby looks nice and snug. Maybe just a little bit of a liquefier to kind of even it out, get rid of some lumps and bumps. But I do also like how it's really kind of organic in terms of what you've got going on there. Now these yellows here are slightly different to the yellows here. That's an easy fix. Um, you know, I can see that they're fake, fake flowers. So, you know, just even changing the color, your brush mode to color, and selecting, you know, one of these sort of warmer tones. You can come in, and this is a little bit tedious. You can change color of things differently. I'm doing this really quick. But you know what, if you tone those down, they won't be so, oh, what am I doing? I'm trying to increase my brush. Tone them down, they won't be so 
bright and over and they'll match the color of the baby um, if that makes sense and yeah the little star on top of the hat it's like I can see that it's a star because I keep looking at it to try and work out what it is and then there's just a little um, shadow at the top up here and I'll get my brush back on red and this one here just a little bright and it's coming straight up like an ear almost like a little rabbit's ear from the baby's head so just be careful of things like that that um, pull your eye away from the baby but yeah good job oh the uh, the styling here is really lovely in terms of all the, the those sort of beautiful beautiful muted tones I love this kind of color um, setup I've got a lot of softening and a lot of sharpening going on here when you do that you do create um, yeah it's um, you do create sort of it's like a, a an over blur almost of the edge there which isn't consistent in terms of depth of field so something to be really con, um, considerate of I know when you are doing this pose the backgrounds um, can be very hard to kind of blend and 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 remove a lot of the distracting texture that can be behind the baby so this is where the camera angle and the way that you position the baby on the back background in this particular setup um, you know can can play to your advantage so for example um, you're kind of shooting this quite square on and, and I like this for a different kind of perspective but if you just angle that baby because if it's if it's straight up if you support the baby from behind and angle it sort of back and then you shoot from a much higher perspective down on the baby you'll be you'll be shooting with this as your background not this so depending on where you point and focus um, that background that that camera angle you're gonna change the background there um, yeah and just be careful not to over blur there because we've sort of got um, you know some sharpening going on and then we've got some blurrier sort of blobs in in the foreground there as well so you do have to be consistent in terms of when you shoot um, say for example at 2.8 wide open you've got your foreground you know you've got your middle focal plane and then you've got your background so obviously your background is going to be out of focus your what you're shooting um, you know in that in that sort of four to mid ground is going to be in focus and then you've got um, your four foreground which is going to be soft as well because it's away from that focal plane when you are editing you've got to be consistent with that focal plane otherwise it's just going to to look off and create distracting elements throughout the image and just be careful when you're using really fluffy um, fabrics and wools when you over sharpen them they start to look wiry and sort of um, itchy almost mm. yeah but you know the the baby um, is holding that beautiful teddy bear I think that looks lovely just um, when the mouth is open this is kind of cute but sometimes when the mouth is open and it becomes a black hole um, just push that chin up and um, and close that so it's not so distracting but yeah no I think you you're on to something um, just a few things to be considerate of and again just kind of using that liquify tool sort of push in a few of these little lumps and bumps and where you've got some highlights in and shadows you can darken and lighten those just to make that look a little flatter and not so sort of lumpy and bumpy All right. Okay. We've had a few bum ups today, haven't we? Yeah. Alrighty. So we've got a pink background. I can see here that there is a lot of banding going on, and that the background has been um, a lot had a lot of treatment to it. So if I zoom in, I can see sort of down here that there's texture in the background here, and then we start to lose all of that texture and detail down you know from there and around the baby uh, I can see that it's kind of coming up into the skin there's texture there none here so it's been painted a lot um, when you are painting the background what that does is you are painting on a, a color that um, is very hard to be consistent throughout the entire image and then when you have shifts of tone 
as they gradient um, through that information where there is no detail, this is when we start to create banding and it's very hard to, to completely correct banding. Um, obviously, you know, when you're, you're shooting your, your, your babies, you want to get that blanket as smooth as you possibly can. This is where you need to create a firm, um, a, a firm thick layering of blankets underneath the baby. Actually, are mine up here? I don't think they are. But I use these I IKEA blankets, and um, they there's four of them. They are up here, and Garrett's going to bring them over. I'll go to full screen. These are three dollars each from IKEA. So they're just sort of soft blankets. There are four doubled over. So this is what I have underneath my my posing blanket. It's a really thick layer. Um, and that's pulled obviously tight across the top of my posing bag and the well there. So when I place my supports underneath, they become, you know, like a smooth mound. And then I use my backdrop stand to pull that blanket really tight so I don't have um, any, any wrinkles. Or it's a lot easier to remove the wrinkles in the background um, because there's, there's fewer of them. So if you're trying to get that smooth background, get it right in camera so you're not having to paint all the way around the baby and creating this sort of, this banded, um, uh, banded background. And, and it will blur into um, you know, the baby when you are, are sort of painting in some of those areas. I recently, um, um, saw this in a lot of images I was judging in a, in a competition um, and the, the painting around the baby was just inconsistent and um, and there was no detail no shadow so yeah you do have to be very very careful of that and you've got some you know sort of lighter tones in the background there all right okay so let's have a look now at I'll zoom out a little bit more have a look here at our um, rule of thirds. So we've got, I think this is like a 16-9 ratio. Um, it's a little wider in frame. Um, not nor, I, I'm normally like a two to three full frame, so which is fine. But what you want to do is kind of have a little look at how much information is around the baby and remove some of it. Sometimes you don't need all of that space. Um, and I would possibly just rotate and bring that baby um, baby's head down just a little bit there. So bringing them in, into the bottom two thirds. When it comes to the posing here, um, the, the bottom half of the baby is, um, is quite tucked up underneath. So you wanna bring those feet out towards the bottom. Can be a little tricky with babies who naturally wanna just continually draw their feet up underneath them, which is fine, they all do it. But it's just a matter of getting that safe shot and then coming back in, I slide my hand in underneath those shins and I just adjust the feet that way um, and I find that much easier and then I use obviously supports in underneath that bottom to lift and like I mentioned previously with the baby in the bum up position you can see this little one's quite rounded so they do prefer to curl up into a ball um, so it can be tricky to get those feet right out underneath them but you know I really love this squishy face up here one thing to be careful of um, with that that squishy face is creating sort of um, creases in the the mouth there so again like I said you know I kind of get my safe shot and then I come in and I, I make a few adjustments this hand here looks doesn't look flat it looks kind of half sort of rolled up so it's a what I, I often find is that when baby's hands the thumb is underneath that palm it is very hard to get that hand flat so if you can push that thumb through, you're gonna get that hand much flatter and that wrist over so that that, um, that cheek is not being so squished there. And what I do is, and it's probably not gonna be very flattering, but um, when I've got that hand up underneath the face and if it's squishing it, I just get my thumb and I give that cheek a little bit of a pull so it sits round on top of the back of the hand there. And what I would potentially do here is just move myself around, where's my mouse, here we go move myself around and shoot from more sort of um, this perspective um, so that way we're not sort of you know coming up here underneath those baby's nostrils it's going to be more flattering I always visualize that there is a line from the top of the the baby's nose to my lens um, here I can see that we're kind of shooting 
you know, from sort of this posi- this position, um, which is can be can be unflattering at times. So you just move your body around a little more. Oh wow! Oh, this is kind of cool. I like this. Um, first thing I'm noticing though is the light is coming in from this direction and it's going straight up the baby's nose, creating these unwanted shadows underneath the eyes, um, that ghoul's lighting. So whenever I do put the baby in this position, I turn their face away from the light and then I turn the dad and the hands in towards the light. So the light is falling across the baby's face from the other perspective. So one thing here, um, you can see there's a lot of information in our blacks and there's some highlights. So if we go into our curves, and I'll hold the Alt key down while I move my black slider. You can see that there's, hang on, I'll just move that over a bit more. You can see that we've got very little kind of information going on there um, in, the, in the dark shadows over here. So we can only see one of Dad's arms, not the other. So just be careful of that in terms of detail. It might be something that you're going for, but this it, it can make... Um, limbs look like they're floating if there's no sort of highlights and shadows there to to define them to to bring them forward so what you want to do is adjust the intensity of that light bring in a reflector over here oops bring in a reflector um, and bounce some light back into to this particular area. With that light coming in so bright, you know, it's it's really sort of creating some some highlights and there's one here right in the uh, in the groin area of the baby that is really bright and draws your eye down. So just be careful of those. You can tone those down in post production, but this is probably more about the intensity of that light and having it you know, super close um, and creating some of those overexposed highlights. But yeah, I think the posing of the baby is lovely. Um, just the, the turning the head the other way and positioning them a little more on a 45 degree angle towards that light source would have really helped here and a, and a reflector. But I love the paint here on the face and I think the composition um, is really lovely too. I'm sure the parents will love that. Oh, look at this. I like having a, um, a child portrait in here. This is lovely. Okay, first thing I see though is that she's smack bang in the middle of the frame. I probably would lose some of the background at the top here in terms of composition. Um, so I would, um, I would probably have this more there and it's about her and have her still in the center of the frame, but now we're eliminating a lot of that negative space around her because it doesn't add to the story and it, it doesn't complement the image. It's a beautiful background, but you don't need it there. It's not, not any, it's not a part, she's not connected to that background is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, I think the lighting is beautiful. You can see that it's coming in from a slightly higher perspective and um, it's coming across her face beautifully there. There's a couple of little highlights here on the hair that I just toned down ever so slightly because they are quite bright and they're pulling you away. When I see people um, bring their hands up like this, it can be very hard to get them to look natural. So, and, and you don't wanna just have a child sort of standing there, um, you know, looking blankly with their arms dangling down and, and the and the, um, what do you call it, the, the frame cutting through their, their limbs. But when it comes to having them position those hands, just getting them to look soft. So one thing I always do is, you know, get them to bring their fingers together and then position them. And now I want you to relax those fingers. And you can, and then you can start to sort of get that better shape because the knuckles here um, look a little bright and a little stiff. So you can turn those down as well. But, you know, I really love the connection with the camera and that soft expression. You know, we see a lot of these kind of um, images at the moment. Another thing is this arm is somewhat bigger than the back arm and, um, and, and is quite large in comparison to her face. So I don't know what 
uh, lens was used here, but a longer focal length is going to um, flatten features and it's going to create less distortion. Because we've because we're quite sort of close to the bottom of the frame here, it can make elbows and um, parts of the body appear slightly bigger than what they actually are. So you do have to be really careful with that. Um, lens selection is, is probably one of the most important aspects um, other than lighting and posing and that exposure. But there are different lenses for different, um, you know, uh, genres of photography and the a 35 mil and I'm not I'm not saying what lens was used here because I don't know and I can't assume but a wide-angle lens like a 35 mil for example is is not a portrait lens a portrait lens is a longer focal length and I explain all of this in my free lens video that's on YouTube and where else is it Garrett um, uh, yeah, there is a link to it actually in the group yeah just can... go Kelly Brown um, free lens tutorial and I go through all of the different focal lengths and explain them. So yeah, just be careful with those lenses. And with those um, blacks in the shirt, just be careful. We've got a few little blacks kind of hitting the edge there. You won't print any detail. So just be careful with, um, with the detail there and bring in a little bit of um, light there. Alrighty. But yeah, I love her expression. Mm. Okay. All right, looking at this histogram, we've got some information that's hitting the edge of our frame. We've got a very white background um, with not a lot of detail, so it kind of looks like it's floating. I can see that there's some soft shadows down here, but it's been over-processed to the point where it looks like um, this whole thing here is kind of sitting on nothing. So you need to ground it and you need to have some detail there. Um, yeah, so maybe um, using textures and you know what, go out and shoot your own textures. Add some texture into that background. You know, don't get rid of those um, shadows either. So you can sort of ground it and you'll, um, you'll be good. So the headboard here is really quite dark. It's the darkest part of the image and then we've got a little bit of it sticking out over here. So they are quite distracting because it's not consistent and they, they're the darkest part of the image and, but only a small part of the image. So if you zoom out, it's really, um, you know, like you can see part of the baby and then you can see the white background, but the, your eye continually will be drawn to that, that darkest part there because it doesn't fit with the composition or the styling. So just be careful of that. Um, the, the baby's, a, like the baby obviously looks like it's in a deep sleep there. It looks relaxed and comfortable, just bringing those arms across. Potentially, this is where I like to wrap babies so that they, um, you know, they keep all their little arms and legs in the, in the same spot there. And yeah, but I think, you know, in terms of the, the styling with the little headband and the, the greeny, jady colored um, blanket, you know, you've done a great job. The, the texture in that green blanket, though, is really quite sort of, um, it's a big texture in terms of the knitted knot there, so they can be distracting. Uh, I would, in liquify, kind of tuck in some of these edges to make it a little bit um, neater and tidier. And then I would um, um, come in and I would work on probably the, the skin tones in terms of uh, warming those up. The baby is quite bright. Um, if we go to our curves and we have a look here, we can see that, you know, we've got some detail it's the the belly and the cheek and the nose where we've lost some detail in those highlights there so a little bit overexposed and then obviously that big belly is really quite bright um, on that baby so you want to be able to to control that light a little better and um, and the direction of it as well because as we can see it's kind of coming in from over here and it's hitting this area of the baby first. It's a large surface area compared to the face um, and the face is not getting a lot of that light. So you really do want to try and turn that face towards the light and reduce this area here so it's not, um, not creating a, a large area that's quite bright. So yeah, I hope all of these kind of tips and tricks have helped. Um, you know, I've kind of gone through, I was, you know, I, I didn't really 
give too much gentle critique today, or was I? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I, I didn't offend anyone. But at the same time, this is what I'm seeing. And sometimes, you know, you just need to look at your image through somebody else's eyes. And I've been doing this for 15 years. I've studied photography. I have a diploma in photography. I, you know, I, I'm quite technical when it comes to critiquing and judging. And I'm very particular about details. Um, so that's just what I've noticed in, in the images that we've come across today. And it, even if you didn't get an image submitted, um, I hope it was helpful as well in terms of what you might look for in your photography because I know in the past with my images, having listening, listened to some judges critique them, um, you know, I'd be sitting at the back of the room going, no, that's not right. Or, you know, getting defensive and then a couple of days later I'll, I'll look at my images and then in the back of my mind I can hear those judges' words. And some of those comments that I've had throughout my career um, have stuck with me every single time and it's how you learn. So don't be afraid to learn, don't be afraid to push yourself to, you know, new places because, uh, you know, we're, as photographers we're only as good as our last image. and. You know, it's just a process of evolving. I still look at my images. I took one the other day and I was so excited about getting that capture. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, it doesn't look like how I visualized it. What could I have done better? How could I have improved that? And, you know, it's just, it's constant. Unfortunately, you never get to a point where you get everything right. You never do, especially when you're photographing babies because they're so unpredictable. You know what, I've probably made a million comments here and I don't know if that baby was fussy, unsettled or really sensitive to touch. So we have a lot of variables when it comes to photographing newborns. And you know what, you've just got to take it all in and do what works best for you and keep going. When it comes to, you know, um, Photography, my three Ps, I always keep in the back of my mind. Practice, uh, be persistent and have patience. You know, you, you've got to keep sort of going at, um, oh, we're lost. That's all right, we will continue. Are we still there? We're still there. Yay, something happened, but anyway. Um, so yeah, just keep going, keep practicing, keep perfecting. And you know what? Get a loaf of bread, like I said, get a, a doll, get something and put create some setups in your studio and go and practice your lighting, practice your camera angles. When you've got nothing to do, get off Facebook. Um, yesterday I did a post about the top 10 time wasters and it's so true. I looked at it and went, oh, I'm one of them. I like, I'm, I'm so bad sometimes. I've got to like realign my brain and refocus on what I'm supposed to be doing and you just have to be consistent. So yeah, I'm gonna go because it's 9.30 and I've got a ton of work to do and I will see you all very soon. Um, we don't have another critique set up for uh, June just yet because uh, I'm headed off to the UK um, on Saturday. But when I get back from this trip, I'll post new links for the new dates for the critiques for the next few months and we can start getting planning and excited for that, but yeah. There's other critiques you can go back and watch in the group too. So yeah, have a great weekend guys. Enjoy your day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.